start the uh, the meeting today by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of um, country throughout Australia. Um, as uh, most of our CPI team is meeting uh, on a country of Noongar people. Uh, so we want to acknowledge their uh, connection to land, waters and culture and to pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging uh, and extend our respect to uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are present here today. I have taken over from uh, Sharon, who's uh, unfortunately um, uh, stuck in between two meetings uh, in her car and uh, unable to, to uh, arrive from the start of this meeting. She'll join us way later today. Uh, so um, uh, that's why you see me and not Sharon um, starting this meeting. Uh, but um, uh, we'll start a little bit by just um, reminding everyone uh, that this series of webinars is uh, run as part of CEPAR, the Center for Excellence in Population Aging Research, and specifically our uh, Stream 3 of Research Organizations and the Mature Workforce. Uh, we are very, very delighted to have Professor Hannah Zacher today with us, um, uh, sharing um, uh, some of the um, his very interesting uh, uh, research in the space of mature uh, workers. Um, our uh, focus on organizations and the mature workforce within the wider CPAR uh, is just one uh, stream of research within the wider CPAR. Uh, and we are particularly interesting, uh, interested to look um, at how we can help organizations uh, design work um, that engages mature workers, keeps them healthy and productive, and um, uh, supports them in continuing engagement in the work. Um, so um, our key research questions are around how we can facilitate increased participation of mature workers in work, uh, what factors contribute to increased engagement uh, and productivity of uh, mature workers, how can organizations capitalize on the unique knowledge base resources that uh, mature organization, uh, mature workers bring with them? And how can organizations promote the uh, effective balance between work and non-work non -work responsibilities? Um, as um, probably uh, some of you remember from past um, uh, seminars, uh, we have a uh, uh, a research team in Perth, but we also conduct research with our partners in Sydney uh, to uh, cover a broad range of, of topics associated with mature workers in organizations. Uh, I'll only um, spend a little bit more time going through our uh, include individualize and integrate model, which is the model of meta strategies um, that we um, work towards with organizations to help them uh, create better workplaces for mature workers. And as we've presented the model before, I won't um, uh, uh, insist very much on, on it, but just I want to mention that um, today's talk uh, is broadly fitting in the individualized um, uh, section of the model uh, where we look at um, how um, uh, well-being and health of mature workers can be uh, supported uh, and how um, um, aging processes but also work contribute to um, uh, well-being, health and, and continued participation. Um, so um, without too much uh, um, more discussion, we'll just introduce our speaker today, which we are very excited to have. Um, Hannes, thank you so much for uh, for agreeing to um, zoom in from over the, <laughs> the oceans and the world to talk to us today. Um, Hannes is a um, um, professor of work and organizational psychology at the Institute of Psychology. Um, at Leipzig University um, in Germany. Um, I'm, I'm just realizing it's probably, I'm going to probably um, uh, say uh, or pronounce the, <laughs> the wrong way or, or these names, but I'll give it a go. And my apologies if I don't <laughs> pronounce the right names. 
Uh, but Hannes earned his PhD from the University of Giessen in 2009 and um, worked in academic positions in Australia uh, and the Netherlands. Um, his uh, research focus, uh, focuses on aging at work and career development, occupational health and well-being, um, and also proactive and adaptive employee behavior. Uh, across this wide research agenda, uh, he uses multiple methodologies uh, from longitudinal surveys to experience sampling and experiments. Uh, and um, he um, uh, obtained um, competitive grants and industry funding to conduct um, this research, um, including current projects on the role of work for the development and civilization, um, civilization diseases. Uh, and idle time at work. Um, he has published numerous articles in peer-reviewed journals and in the best journals in our field. So um, uh, that's why uh, I'll say it again, we're very excited to have him present today. Uh, and uh, from here on, we'll give the floor to Hannes. Thank you for having me and thanks for the invitation to SIPA Symposium. Um, so yeah, I'll present uh, some recent research we've done uh, on uh, effects of age on occupational well-being. Um, uh, and it's all based on the strength and vulnerability integration model from the lifespan literature, which I'll explain during my talk. Um, to give you a bit of an idea where I'm at right now, that's the Institute of Psychology. We recently um, changed our name to acknowledge our founder, Wilhelm Wundt, uh, who established the Institute in 1879. Uh, so I'm sitting in this building on the second floor. Um, and if you ever come to Leipzig in Germany, um, please, please do let me know. Um, I'll give you a tour of our little um, Wilhelm Wundt Museum, which has some of the original instruments that he's used. Um, yeah, this is the nice side. The, the bad side is that this part of Germany currently has the highest um, COVID infection rates uh, ever. So um, uh, we have an incidence of well uh, over 1,000 uh, per 100,000 inhabitants right now. So maybe right now isn't the best time to to visit, um, but uh, hopefully things will get better next year. Okay, um, so let's uh, focus on the on the topic of age and occupational well-being. Um, there's definitely a trend in the literature um, and also in practice um, due to demographic change and workforce aging that uh, people are more and more interested in relations between employee age um, and various indicators of well-being. Um, and there has been quite a bit of research um, on cross-sectional associations already. For instance, uh, meta-analyses show that um, employee age is positively related to uh, favorable well-being outcomes, such as positive affect and job satisfaction, um, job engagement, and so forth. Um, so that is quite well established. Um, research also finds cross-sectional negative associations between age and various strain, uh, work-related strain outcomes, such as negative affect in the workplace, emotional exhaustion, uh, job fatigue, and so forth. So this is well established by uh, meta-analyses. Um, we have to keep in mind that these are cross-sectional associations, so we can't really um, say anything about the aging process here. Um, or maybe the role of cohort effects. Um, the issue with the literature at the moment is that uh, even though there's various theoretical models in the lifespan developmental literature, uh, we don't really know much about the mechanisms and boundary conditions of these associations between age and occupational well-being. Um, so, so far, uh, what we know is that age is positively related to favorable outcomes um, in the well-being arena. Um, and negatively related to strain outcomes, but but we don't really know why that is. And um, uh, what we do know is that aging is associated with changes in various domains of functioning that may impact on well-being. So it's not age per se that impacts well-being; it's age-related processes. Um, so, for instance, changes in physio physiology and health, um, changes in various um, emotional regulation strategies, uh, all those might be uh, mechanisms that explain these associations, but they haven't really been in, um, investigated um, that all that well. Um, also, uh, what's 
currently not really well understood is uh, what the role of job characteristics or work characteristics is in these associations. So these indirect effects of age and occupational well-being might depend on the work context. Um, and uh, so we set out to um, develop and test a model um, that examines such conditional indirect effects of age on changes in job satisfaction and emotional exhaustion as two important indicators of work-related well-being. Um, I'll, I'll show you the conceptual model uh, right away um, and then explain uh, these uh, variables in some more detail and also the lifespan model that this uh, conceptual model is based on. Uh, so we looked at associations between chronological age, uh, emotion regulation and physiological disease and how these mechanisms in turn impact on changes in job satisfaction and emotional exhaustion. And we also considered the role of experienced workplace incivility um, as a moderator of these um, um, uh, associations um, on the right here. Um, just some brief Definitions before I'll talk about the theory. Um, job satisfaction um, is both a job attitude, but it can also be conceived as a work occupational well being outcome. Uh, Locke has defined it as a pleasurable or positive emotional affective state that results from the appraisal of one's job or job related experiences. And emotional exhaustion is also typically um, seen as an important indicator of poor well being at work. Um, it's feelings of uh, depletion and fatigue and it's part of the burnout syndrome. Um, as age-related mechanisms here, we, we looked at emotion regulation uh, because that has been well established um, uh, as something that improves with age. So it's typically seen as something uh, that grows as people get older. And it refers to the use of strategies um, that help to control one's emotions in stressful situations. So it's been hypothesized that older people are better at keeping their emotions in, under control when they uh, perceive stress at work. Um, and physiological disease um, has been neglected so far. Um, there is a meta-analysis, though, on um, employee age and health uh, that shows that uh, the uh, older people, older workers have higher likelihood of experiencing physiological disease than, than younger workers. And uh, for this particular study, we defined it as having um, diagnosed uh, diseases, uh, including cardiovascular problems. Um, uh, problems uh, with um, the back or the spine, musculoskeletal problems uh, and or hormonal and metabolic disease. So we, we looked at an index of uh, various age-related diseases in the study. Um, and lastly, um, work-related boundary condition. Um, here we focused on experienced incivility because it is a very common um, and at the same time, quite impactful workplace stressor that has received increasing attention in the literature on occupational health and well-being. And it uh, involves that employees face more or less subtle mistreatment with ambiguous intent to harm uh, and varying degrees of microaggressions by other people at their workplace, including colleagues, supervisors and customers. Um, so we, we um, uh, wanted to um, include, um, yeah, very, very common and impactful workplace, chronic workplace stressor um, 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 based on the strength and vulner vulnerability integration model from the lifespan literature, which I'll introduce next. So maybe you've come across this when you're interested in uh, age and work. Uh, this is uh, taken directly from Susan Charles uh, 2010 paper that introduces the strength and vulnerability integration model. Um, it's an extension of the quite well-known socio-emotional selectivity theory. Uh, Susan Charles is a student of Laura Carstensen, so she included some aspects of socio-emotional selectivity into her model, but extended it um, by also, and also considered um, um, basically the, the vulnerability parts, the downsides of aging. Um, and what she proposed is that aging leads to changes in perspective, including time, future time perspective, 
um, but also uh, um, changes in time lived or experience. So she said that older people future time perspective diminishes at the same time they um, gain experience um, um, and they're also getting better at adaptation to loss and uh, this pathway appears the so-called strength path pathway in the model so these changes uh, various changes in perspective lead to uh, improved emotion regulation strategies um, at the same time Charles proposes in the in the Savi model that age leads to uh, lower physiological flexibility, or this here she says it has positive effect on reduced physiologic flexibility, which basically means it's uh, physiological flexibility is going down with with age, um, and this is the vulnerability pathway of the model. Um, and uh, she basically argues that as people get older. They have uh, more difficulties regulating um, their responses to stressors. Uh, for example, they if they experience a, a stressful event, um, then uh, their blood pressure will uh, stay high, um, and their their various physiological reactions um, um, don't go back to normal as quickly as as among younger people. And that's the vulnerability part. And then she proposes that both these age-related strengths and uh, vulnerabilities impact on emotional well-being. Um, and here she differentiates between well-being before a negative event, during a negative event, and after a negative event. Um, well-being before a negative event is uh, basically general well-being. Uh, so if you don't experience any stressors, um, and uh, well-being during a negative event is when uh, you currently face uh, um, um, an intense stressor, for example, in the workplace. Um, and the model argues that um, the age-related strengths are um, basically favorable for older people um, in times when there's no stressor, but problematic when they experience stressors or then they go, the effects go down. Whereas the vulnerabilities become especially important when uh, people experience a negative event, um, then uh, the the vulnerability effect kicks in, um, uh, and this interplay leads to um, um, improvements in um, emotional well-being with age overall. Um, but uh, the model says at the same time, if older adults experience intense chronic stressors, their well-being will be reduced. Uh, so that's a brief uh, uh, summary of this of the Savi model, which really hasn't been tested um, with respect to these pathways in the literature. And that's where we set out to do a study. Um, there has been um, there have been several uh, um, uh, very interesting studies that drew on the Savi model as a general framework, but um, they have, for example, not focused on well-being or they haven't really separated these two uh, strength and vulnerability pathways. Um, so the two pathways, um, again, is that age is assumed to be positively related to uh, the use of emotion regulation strategies, and that explains why older adults generally experience higher well-being in general life, so before and after stressful events. Um, and age-related changes in physiology lead to reduced flexibility or reactivity, which explains why older adults have greater difficulty modifying their arousal during stressful events. Um, so when people experience older people experience stressful situations, their well-being should be lower. Um, so based on the Savi model, we developed four hypo interaction hypotheses. Um, first, we hypothesized that um, the positive indirect effect of age on well on on job satisfaction um, uh, is stronger when experience in civility is low as compared to when it's high. Uh, so that's the strength pathway. And we also hypothesize that the negative indirect effect of age on emotional exhaustion through emotion regulation is stronger when experienced in civility is low. That basically follows directly from the propositions of Savi. So when um, older people don't experience stressors, um, their well-being should be higher due to higher, better emotion regulation strategies. At the same time, and now I'll focus on the vulnerability pathway, 
the negative indirect effect of age through on, on uh, job satisfaction through physiological disease is stronger when experience incivility is high um, as compared to when experience incivility is low. Uh, so this is basically another moderated mediation uh, hypothesis and the positive indirect effect of age on uh, um, emotional exhaustion is stronger when experience incivility is high. So basically we argue that this vulnerability pathway becomes more relevant when people experience workplace stressors or here experience incivility. Um, now this is quite complex, but these were the four hypotheses we um, um, developed uh, a priori to, to test the SAVI model. Um, yeah, I forgot to say chronological age here is um, conceptualized as a continuous variable as time uh, lived since birth. Okay. Um, so how did we uh, test these hypotheses? Um, if you're interested, uh, you can look at the data and code to reproduce the results on the open science framework. Um, we uh, uh, conducted a longitudinal survey study um, with three time points across five months. Um, and importantly, that was done before COVID-19. Um, so um, in t time one was in July, time two in August, and time three in November 2018. Um, so we don't have any pandemic effects on these on these data here. Participants were uh, 781 full-time employees. Um, those were the ones who provided complete data at all three measurement occasions. 43% um, were female and the average age was 43.7 years uh, with the standard deviation of 11, which is uh, uh, quite representative of the German working population. Um, and they also had uh, quite some uh, professional experience. Um, the sample was a bit um, more highly educated than the average German uh, working population. So 40% uh, had college or university degrees. Okay, so uh, job satisfaction was measured with a single item. All in all, how satisfied have you been with your job in the past month? Uh, emotional exhaustion was measured with four items from, from a burnout inventory. For example, I felt emotionally drained from my work. Uh, and we assessed both of these outcomes at time two and time three. Uh, so we can uh, look at changes over time in uh, um, um, these occupational well-being indicators. But I have to note that uh, if we don't look at changes, so if we don't control for the baseline, the results are essentially the same. Emotion regulation, um, it's difficult to operationalize because there's so many different ways of operationalizing emotion regulation. We chose to um, um, assess three items from um, an emotional intelligence scale. Um, um, for example, I'm in control of my own emotions. Um, we also we measured physiological disease with three items and form computed an index. Um, it's based on the workability index by Ilmarinen and colleagues. Uh, so as I said, cardiovascular disease um, diagnosed by a doctor, hormone or metabolic diseases, so in, for example, obesity disorders of the musculoskeletal system. And we com um, um, computed a formative um, index, um, the reliability of that index uh, was maybe not surprisingly quite low, so about Cronbach's alpha was 0.40 or so, but uh, that's not uncommon for such health indices. Um, here I can say if we include each of these diseases separately in the analyses, the results stay the same. So it uh, doesn't really matter which disease was diagnosed. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, to assess experience incivility at work, uh, we took uh, three items from um, incivility scale. For example, how often has someone at work done the following to you during the past month, uh, ignored or excluded you from professional camaraderie, uh, for example, social conversations. Um, other items refer to being ignored um, or um, called names and so forth. So unpleasant social, um, situations or um, yeah, subtle forms of harassment 
um, uh, um, which fits quite well with the Savi model because um, Charles proposed that especially these social stressors um, being excluded are particularly uh, relevant to older adults. Okay, so uh, we analyzed the data using structural equation modeling um, and we used the product indicator approach to specify latent variable interactions. Uh, there's uh, other ways to um, operation uh, to test uh, in variable latent variable interactions, um, but our results are not sensitive to the type of an analytical strategy used. So we decided to go with the more straightforward one that gives us fit indices. Um, and the changes in job satisfaction and emotional exhaustion were specified as latent change scores. Um, so basically change between August and November in job satisfaction and emotional exhaustion. So in a way, uh, we can't really uh, draw causal conclusions here, but uh, we can at least argue that we predict change and um, age is endogenous to, to these changes because uh, reverse causality on uh, predicting age is unlikely. Okay, uh, first step uh, was we conducted, uh, we, we tested our measurement model um, and we conducted a five factor CFA, so confirmatory effect analysis, including the key measures. We included job satisfaction as a single item here. Um, and this uh, five-factor model had a pretty good fit and was superior to um, a one-factor model with all of these um, um, variables loading on the same factor. So we, we're confident to say that um, the measures were, were distinct. Um, now let's look at the results. Um, as expected, age had a positive effect on uh, emotion regulation. Uh, variance explained was rather low, though only three percent. Um, but that uh, has to do with, yeah, a, more, there's more than age explained variance in emotion regulation. Um, um, but uh, we found a significant effect. Um, age explained a higher proportion of the variance in physiological disease, twenty-three percent. Um, so age um, had a quite strong. Um, effect on the likelihood of um, having a diagnosed physiological disease here. Um, so we found support for this age-related strength uh, as well as the age-related vulnerability. And this suggests that future studies shouldn't only focus on these age-related strengths, but also um, consider um, reduced, physiological uh, reduced physiological health or increased physiological disease um, as important age-related outcome. Um, we found, um, as expected, a negative, a negative effect of emotion regulation on change in emotional exhaustion. So people who uh, are better at regulating their emotion experience less emotional exhaustion. Um, and we found a positive effect uh, um, of emotion regulation on change in job satisfaction. Um, so this is quite consistent with the, with the literature on, on emotion regulation. Uh, we also found, as expected, a negative effect of physiological disease on change in job satisfaction. So people who have health issues, uh, their job satisfaction is reduced. Um, and people who have physiological disease, um, they, are, um, they experience an increase in emotional exhaustion over time. So um, a, a weak um, positive effect here um, of the vulnerability pathway. So those were the main effects. Um, we explained uh, good proportions of variance in these outcomes, so 32% in job status, change in job satisfaction and 26% in emotional exhaustion. Um, hide the direct effects of age, so I put them on the slide here. Um, age was uh, consistent with the literature also um, uh, positively related to change in job satisfaction above and beyond these mechanisms. Um, and uh, it also had a, a negative effect on emotional exhaustion. So there's some, um, some mechanisms left unexplained here in this model. Uh, we still find uh, that age has independent effects on these outcomes. Now, uh, finally, the indirect effects of age on uh, occupational well-being outcomes through these two mechanisms were all significant. Um, so uh, consistent with the SAVI model, we found support for these um, 
four pathways from age to the two occupational well-being indicators. So, so that's uh, the good news. We found some support for the SAVI models predictions um, regarding the conditional B path relationships. So, so um, the the um, effects, the moderating effects of experienced incivility that we proposed, and there were core to our paper. We only found one uh, significant interaction. Um, of between emotion regulation and experienced incivility on emotional exhaustion. Um, uh, so when experienced incivility was high, the relationship between emotion regulation and emotional exhaustion was non-significant, whereas when experienced incivility was low, the relationship between emotion regulation and emotional exhaustion was significant and negative. So this uh, interaction is consistent with the SAVI model. Um, I'll have plotted here. So uh, basically the SAVI model says that emotion regulation or older workers' strengths in emotion regulation are more effective when uh, they don't experience stressors. Um, and we find that when workplace incivility is low, that's the solid line here, uh, emotion regulation reduces emotional exhaustion. But when people experience rather high levels of incivility, uh, the emotion regulation doesn't help them anymore. So in that case, uh, older people who have higher levels of emotion regulation, um, uh, they, um, ex they have higher vulnerabilities. So then in that case, um, emotion regulation doesn't help uh, with reducing emotional exhaustion. And then uh, we, we see that the vulnerability pathway becomes more important. Um, so um, we also find um, uh, the significant conditional indirect effects of age on emotional exhaustion, um, uh, conditional upon experienced incivility. Uh, so this is basically an extension of the sig of the significant B path interaction. Um, the indirect effect indirect effect of age on exhaustion through emotion regulation is non-significant when incivility is high, whereas the indirect effect of age on emotional exhaustion through emotion regulation uh, is significant and negative when experienced incivility is low. So that's partial support uh, for the SAVI models predictions in the work context, but we didn't find support for hypotheses um, two to four. Um, so only one supported hypothesis, but we still um, got it published, um, um, uh, at least in an aging journal. Um, reviewers of the more traditional work and organizational psychology journals or management journals didn't really like it, um, but the lifespan researchers liked it, um, and that's, that's uh, made us really happy. Um, we conducted some various supplemental analyses um, um, so, for example, we uh, included um, sex, education, income, professional experience, and perceived remaining time as um, covariates in the model. Uh, the fit was still okay, but it decreased compared to the focal model. Um, and most importantly, uh, the estimates were the same in terms of the substantive conclusions drawn, uh, and especially the moderating effect of experience in civility. Those um, findings didn't change when we included those covariates. Uh, we also looked at industry um, because the reviewer argued that um, older workers might work in different industry that um, uh, where age-related strengths play out more, but we didn't find any industry effects, um, even though various industries were represented. So uh, we didn't find that age was distributed differently across industries um, and the model didn't um, really depend on industry as well. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll come to the discussion part. Um, there are a number of studies that have used the SAVI model as a broad framework um, to examine um, direct and interactive effects of age and various work-related stressors, uh, for instance, customer mistreatment, age discrimination, and emotional job demands. So um, we, we do acknowledge uh, these, these uh, excellent studies that have been published um, based on the SAVI model. Um, but as I said at the beginning, um, these studies didn't, some didn't focus on well being as an outcome, which is not consistent with the SAVI model. Um, 
or they uh, didn't test uh, the divergent age-related mechanisms proposed by the model. Um, so emotion regulation and uh, physiological flexibility or disease. So um, this is where we go beyond these studies. Um, and I think uh, we need more um, studies uh, that directly test these lifespan models and not just um, 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 invoke those theories um, to, um, um, to, to, to justify the hypothesis. Um, what's interesting, uh, so now I, I'll, I'll report some additional results in the discussion section, but um, maybe it's still interesting. We found um, that age was negatively related to experienced incivility, both at time two and time three. So um, moderate uh, negative correlations here. So older people experienced less incivility than younger people, which is interesting. Um, uh, but it's it's also consistent with a meta-analysis that came out recently uh, that found a, a average relationship of minus 0.18 between age and customer mistreatment. Um, so we only have that bivariate correlation, but I think uh, for future research, it would be really interesting to test um, why older people experience less incivility at work than younger people. Um, um, and we have some hypotheses uh, in our discussion section. A uh, reviewer from the um, lifespan literature um, suggested that we should, uh, th this could be explained by the social input model, which isn't so well known uh, in, the, in the work and organizational uh, uh, literature. Uh, but it, it basically says that older people have many reasons to be nicer at work to others. Um, so they don't want confrontation, they don't want conflict. At the same time, um, other people also have good reasons to be nicer to older people. They don't want to upset them, they um, pay respect to older people and so forth. So that's that could be a potential explanation. Um, other explanations are that older people maybe work in different positions. Uh, they might be more likely to have um, um, tenure or uh, in a supervisory position. Um, and also they, um, of course, they regulate their emotions um, uh, in response to effective work events more strongly. Um, but that that's something uh, would be very interesting for future research to test uh, the mechanisms um, of these of this finding. Um, our study has a number of limitations. Um, we only use survey measures and uh, some of these survey measures were quite, yeah, uh, um, uh, proxy um, um, operationalizations of the SAVI model. So uh, the SAVI model focuses on attentional appraisal and behavioral emotion regulation strategies and we used um, quite homogenous um, um, operationalization. So basically only um, whether people can control their emotions. Uh, so that's probably behavioral emotion regulation. And uh, as a proxy for physiological flexibility, we used an indicator of physiological disease. Um, the, those two constructs, physiological disease and physiological flexibility are closely related though. Um, people who have um, higher, uh, who have cardiovascular problems, they have lower physiological flexibility, so they can um, not react as well to stressors. Their, their blood pressure stays high. Um, we controlled for experience and future time perspective post hoc, but we didn't test that in our mediation model as proposed by the SAVI model. Um, so that's something future research could, could do is explicitly include those as, or test the sequential mediation model. Um, and another problem is that age, emotion regulation, and physiological disease were all measured at time one. And interestingly, a reviewer at a management journal suggested that uh, there might be reverse causality here. Um, we argued uh, in response that it's unlikely that uh, better emotion regulation and higher physiological disease are changing age, um, but they, they still rejected it. Um, I don't know why. Um, the the SAVI model also focuses on aging explicitly. So it's a lifespan developmental theory, um, but we only looked at age-related differences as most studies um, in this area, but it would be good to look at longer time spans. And um, um, there, is, there is some work that uh, uses um, archival data to test that over a longer time period. Um, 
yeah, uh, all measures were collected via self-reports. Um, um, future research could uh, look at different indicators of physiological disease. Um, and uh, we only focused on one particular workplace stressor. Um, and future research could look whether other workplace stressors, for example, extreme forms of bullying or just general high workload um, show the same effects. Um, but I suggest that this future research also stays close to the SAVI model, which explicitly mentions uh, chronic social stressors um, as particularly relevant. Okay, so uh, we tested, a, um, to, to wrap up, we tested a conceptual model based on the SAVI model from the lifespan literature, which is a bit the neglected um, um, younger sister of the socio-emotional selectivity theory, but I think it's a more powerful theory because it integrates the socio-emotional selectivity theory. Um, we found that age had indirect effects on well-being outcomes through these mechanisms, um, but independent of experienced uh, uh, incivility or civility. Um, and only one of these conditional indirect effects was supported. So um, we, we need to explore that in more detail, um, why that wasn't the case across the board. Maybe uh, because SAVI was developed for older and very old adults. So um, um, Susan Charles probably thought of 80 year olds or 90 year olds who have to regulate their emotions. And our oldest uh, participants were 73, I think. Okay, um, so uh, that's that's about it. Uh, this research was funded by the Volkswagen Foundation. It's a collaboration with Kurt Rudolph, and uh, it was accepted at Psychology and Aging last week. So uh, the the DOI doesn't work yet, but uh, in case you want to look it up, uh, you can do that in a couple of weeks. Um, and also want to point out the book that was already mentioned where Sharon and uh, Daniela have a great chapter on uh, organizational meta strategies um, and that book age and work advances in theory methods and practices coming out um, on the 17th of January next year so uh, if you order now you can get a 20 percent discount thank you very much first of all uh, very much um, warmly thank Hannes for doing this at this crazy time of the year when we are all um, super busy. Um, just very quickly, we like to highlight some research in, in, our, in our sessions and I did just want to draw attention to another wonderful paper by Court and Hannes. And this is a six wave longitudinal study that really shows, um, what I like about this study is that it shows if you've got good HR practices, it creates that great climate and that enhances workability, which no doubt has got really important consequences for retention of mature workers and things. So that one's only just come out as well. So please take a little note of that one. Uh, we also just like to also highlight a mature worker and spotlight them. And um, this is a lovely story and you can read more about it there of a, of a 70 year old um, worker, a, a lady that had actually had multiple degrees and careers, but ended up leaving the workforce to care for her mother at the age of 62 but then decided to come back and, and work in the aged care workforce and really loved it. And you can see, you know, found the work incredibly meaningful. Um, and, and so originally came back for financial purposes, but ultimately stayed in the work, even though um, she is at this older age because of the value and the meaning of the work. So I think that's a really lovely um, example of, of the protective role of work um, for mental health and wellbeing in this just want to very quickly quickly flag, we have some small grants um, available for anyone who would like to collaborate with us, up to $10,000. Normally we'd love to have you visit Australia, but we can't let anyone into our country right at the moment. So we've created this scheme instead, um, which is about collaborating with us on some of these topics and lots of detail there. And please just shoot us an email if you would like to find out more about how you could engage in that award. I just want to say that our next symposium, which will be in February, um, will be with Professor Jürgen Weger um, from Germany. We love having Germans um, in our series <laughs> um, who, are, who do fabulous research in this space. So without further ado, I'm going to um, thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining us today. 
And a special thank you to Harness at this crazy time of the year for being with us and sharing with your, uh, your wonderful research that is going to inspire all of us, I know. So without further ado, um, goodbye, everybody. And thank you for joining all the people who are on board. <laughs>